Yince, there was a wheatler. No, just a wheatler that whistled with his mouth. But no, he made whistles out of wood. He'd get sticks from branches and he'd make the perfect, most beautiful whistles you've ever ha heard. He'd get a stick of just the right size and he'd burn all the way through the middle of it. And then, then he'd shape the mouthpiece and he'd drill holes in it. They made the most bonny sounds. And he'd sell them. He'd soak them in salt water and he'd polish them up fine and he'd sell them. And he also taught people how to whistle. Ah, it was a fine life. He made them out of hazel and rowan and all sorts of things. And one day he found a rowan tree, a rowan tree, and he just, ah, there was something about this rowan tree that seemed, well, magical almost. The bark on it just was that beautiful shining gleaming colour. And he cut a stem. He cut a stem and he poked all the way through, fired through it, drilled the holes, set it to cure and then he picked it up to play. And it played the most amazing tune you've ever heard. It was incredible. It was well, it was like nothing he'd heard before. It wasn't a scale that he knew. It wasn't flat and it wasn't sharp. It was, oh, it was lilting and light and it just made his heart sing. He didn't know what to do with it. He certainly didn't want to sell it. He wanted to learn how to play it perfectly. So he would practice. He practiced day in and day out. And one day, one day, well, he'd wandered to a deep parcel of ancient woodland and he was sitting on a stone playing and he played and he played and he played and then all of a sudden the notes just seemed to be able to flow together and it was the most bonny tune you've ever heard. Oh, his heart felt like it was going to dance out of his chest. It was so beautiful. And at that moment, out from the trees walked a woman, a tall, elegant woman with hazelnut skin and ash grey hair and the most beautiful expression you have ever seen. He held his breath when he saw her. He'd never seen anyone quite so beautiful in all his life. And she walked straight toward him and she held out her hand and said, you have called me here from the land of in-between, from the fairy realm, and I, I will be your wife if you want me. I will be your wife for seven years. Take my hand, for you have called me here. Now the man, he didn't quite know what to think about this. I mean, he'd never seen such a beautiful woman, and here she was just saying that she was going to be his wife. He wasn't quite sure what to say. She picked up the whistle and she played a tune. She played a tune that was so beautiful. He realised that he didn't really have any doubts. And so it was agreed they would be husband and wife. As she warned him that she couldn't have any children, but that for seven years they would have a perfect life. And they did. She taught him how to play in all sorts of different notes that he'd never experienced before. Together, they made whistles and they sold them around the country and they taught music to people wherever they went. Ah, oh, their music lessons were so well thought of. People would hear news of them coming from town to town and crowds would come out to learn how to play with this couple. They had a fine life. They had such a beautiful time together and seven years, seven years is not that long. It flew by, it flew by in a blink. And one morning the woman got up and she kissed her husband and told him that she loved him, but that her time was up and that she had to go back to the land in between and he couldn't call her back with that old whistle. It was a one-time deal. You can only call somebody once. 
But she was worried somebody else might be able to figure out a chin to call her back and so she begged him to destroy the whistle. And then they walked. They walked and walked until they went back to that old parcel of ancient woodland. And the man asked if it was possible for him to see her home just this once. And they went. They went to the edge of the trees and with a flourish of her hand she parted the veil. And there, there was the land in between. And the man gazed upon it and there were no words that he could find to describe its beauty. And a tear dripped from his eye and they said goodbye at last. And with many backward looks she disappeared through the veil and it closed again. And the man broke the whistle and sat on that stone and cried. He cried for a long, long time. His grief was so immense he didn't even know that it was possible to feel that much grief in the world. And yet he did. And eventually, it was probably days later he'd lost track of time he didn't know. Eventually, he stood up and he left. He left. And he wandered through the lands and he, he tried to find just the perfect stick to make one of those whistles again. Because while that whistle could only be used once, it was a one in a hundred year event. But who knows, maybe, maybe he could get a stick that played just that perfect note again. And maybe he could call his wife back to him. And so he roamed the lands here and there, trying to find just the perfect, perfect stick to make a new whistle. But he couldn't. Years went by, years and years, and friends of his him urged him to find a new wife. They thought she'd just walked out on him one day. They didn't know, they didn't understand. But he couldn't, he couldn't face the thought of being with anyone else. And eventually, well, his health began to deteriorate. He didn't look after himself anymore. He was so fixated on just making the perfect whistle that he no longer taught lessons. He no longer sold his whistles. He'd just throw them away if they did not play the right notes. And so, eventually, there came the day that he knew it wasn't going to work anymore. In fact, he was found slumped in the doorway and taken to the poor house. That was all they had in those days. There were no hospitals or care homes or anything like that. It was just the poor home. And he was put into a small room off to one side. And the woman who ran the poor home said, well, he's not got long for this world. And at that moment, an elegant woman with ash grey hair and hazelnut skin walked past and went into the room. Oh, he's got a visitor, thought the poor housewoman. But later, when she went to check on the man, he wasn't there. And nobody quite knows what happened to him. But maybe, just maybe, he found a way to join his wife after all.